Happy Valentine's Day, OIB Life Church family and Ocean Isle Beach community, surrounding communities. It's so exciting to have Valentine's Day on a Sunday because we can express our love for God. And I thought of the songs that we would share, I prayed about that, and this one just first came to mind as we sing a love song on Valentine's Day back to God. So why don't you join with us? You might not know this, just reflect on it, or if you do, sing with us in moments like these. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift. together as we engage in ministry every day within our community. It is a blessing to see the love of God as we not only worship Him with our love, but we extend that love one to another. And that's what I wanted to share about today as I was looking at the core values of why we do what we do. Why do we stay on mission with God? On a day like today, I think Valentine's Day, as we celebrate love, it just highlights for me the core values of when we get back to basics. If I were to think of a scripture of why we love God and why we're to love one another, it comes back to that place as, as the Lord instructs us. And he tells us, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And it says, and the second is like it, and it says, love your neighbor as yourself. And that's what I wanted to look at today as we look at this scripture together. What does it mean to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength? And you'll see that in the, in the verse uh, as we uh, lay that out at the end of this message. You might want to reflect on that, and you might just want to soak that scripture up as we express our love 
to him. And it, it is agape love. It's a, a love that is selfless. It's a love that is, if I had to put it in a core aspect of how we love God and how we love one another, it's a love that is unconditional. It's a love that is sacrificial. And it's a love that is forgiving. And when we do that, we understand God's forgiving love for us. But what does that mean? We have to forgive one another in the things that we do. That requires unconditional and sacrificial love. So I wanted to kind of take that. How do we express our love back to God? And there are some scriptures that highlight how we're to love God first. He says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That includes not only those around us, but we can sometimes be consumed in and, in, a, in and about ourselves. You know, I'm so excited about the mission that we have in this church mission, church planning mission here in Ocean Isle, OIB Life Church, because I really feel like this church plant and this group that has been called together is truly on mission with this agape love. As we do life together, we see unconditional love, we see sacrificial love, and we see forgiving love on a daily basis. And I just want to thank God, Veronica and I want to thank the Lord for being a part as God has brought us together to continue to plant into the mission field as we as his laborers go into the harvest field to reap a harvest on a daily basis. And we're seeing that every week. We're seeing that every day. This past week has been so rich in that kind of ministry. You see, agape love is a God-centered love. It is a God-powered love. And listen to this, it's a God-motivated love. It's what gets us up in the morning, right? It's our mission and it's our purpose. It is a, a love that is committed to loving God and loving others beyond all things. And that can get weary. Uh, in our lives. It, it can cause burdens upon our lives, but you know, that's the sacrificial aspect of that. So it's not dependent on being loved back. Think about Jesus on the cross when he says, forgive them for they know not what they do. He forgave them before they even requested to be forgiven. So in other words, agape love is not dependent on love being given back. It's a, it has a, a, a saying that agape love places no conditions, Listen to this, no expectations or stipulations on another person for love to be expressed or displayed. We have to just soak that up, don't we? Because we're uh, naturally selfish. I, I truly believe we were created wanting a bottle from the very beginning. You know, <laughs> We get hungry or we want a diaper change when we're a newborn baby. We already have needs that, that kind of focus ourselves toward ourselves, but you know, God, desires for us to have this agape love that we continue in the power of the Spirit to, to replicate on a daily basis of, of no conditions, of no expectations. Listen to that one. Wow. We just have to, we have to soak that up. Um, so for, we, have, we live in a world of expectations, don't we? We like our comfort. Yeah, and however, however it, or whatever it takes to get it, right? And whoever, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and we put stipulations on people in regards to what we uh, desire before we love them. And that's not agape love. It really isn't. On the other, uh, we, we do that on the other person. It's a love that is to be expressed and displayed. It's therefore unconditional. It's an unconditional love. So as we look at that, we also understand it's a sacrificial love. So I was thinking of a verse in uh, Philippians 2, 3, and 5 that kind of displays this aspect of a risk of stepping out to show uh, an intent regardless of the other person's response. Mm -hmm. An intent of sacrificial love. I'm going to be intentional with my love whether they respond back or not, right? right. Um, so it, it says this, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in, here's the huge word for us I think today, in humility, yeah. value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who laid his life down for us. You see, there it is, back to the crucifixion again. He gave his life that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And so this sacrificial love is um, a brand of love that gives itself up 
and takes risk. Listen, it takes risk. We can be hurt in this process of giving sacrificial love. It takes risk for the welfare and care of others. It really does. And we're going to look at another scripture about what Jesus thinks about those who risk taking uh, this love to the world. And, and, and it takes uh, the needs and the welfare and care of others to a very high level of extending the love of God to the world. So remember that. I'm going to be coming back to that. But then there's a forgiving love. A forgiving love. In our relationships with others, you know, I think the devil sometimes tries to divide the relationships of those who love one another the most because he knows in that he can do the most damage. We say that in churches. We see that in families. Um, and this is a part where forgiveness is so huge in representing our relationship with God because it requires the Holy Spirit to come in and, and give us that, that healing that comes with the anointing of the Holy Spirit in us that, that offers the salve upon those wounds. You know what I'm saying? And isn't it a picture of what he's done for us? It is. I when mean, we he, forgive someone else, it's a picture of his forgiveness for us. You know, when we think about what he went through on the cross and the crucifixion, the suffering he, he took, yeah. uh, they said he was, he was um, bruised for our iniquities, yeah. you know? Um, so he, he not only requested from us, he displayed it for us. Right. Yes, and so agape love expresses this to another person in forgiveness. You don't have to be perfect for me to love and love you and stay in a relationship with you. Um, a lot of times we uh, expect perfection, which is impossible to attain. There's no one who's perfect, no, not one. Mm -hmm. He says, for all have sinned, Romans 3.23, and come short of the glory of God. And uh, so with that, a Christian's forgiveness is not isolated to individual dosings, but it Listen to this, it's a lifestyle. You know, I'm just gonna forgive that person. But that person, no, it, it is the way we live our lives. It's a discipline. Yeah, and it just kind of molds itself into this. Listen to these three words again, the forgiveness and the sacrifice and the unconditional aspect of this love just becomes an all-encompassing walk of our relationship of how we love God and what he has done for us extended to the world. What a beautiful message today in regards to the love that we have and the opportunity of mission we have around us because there's so little of this in our world today. Mm -hmm. So this really resonates. Listen to this verse about forgiveness that, that the Lord laid in Matthew 18, 21 through 22. It says, Jesus answered, um, I tell you that we forgive not seven times, but 77 times. In other words, he basically meant you can't Quit forgiving. It's an endless uh, process. It also says in Matthew 6, 12, out of <clears throat> this um, Lord's Prayer, it says, forgive us of our sins. We recognize that he's forgiven us. Right. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who what? Sin against, Sin us. against us. And he also tells us that we're to love our enemies and to do good for those who despitefully use us. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, that, that is a picture. It's hard. It, it is a picture that requires the Holy Spirit and that love indwelling us on a daily basis. And in order to do that, I truly believe we've got to be in constant communication with the Lord through His Word, through prayer, mm -hmm. through encouragement with one another, and even accountability. I mean, some days we don't get up um, in the attitude of forgiveness, mm -hmm. but the Lord brings us to that attitude as we spend time with Him. So the key application is, as we live this life, loving the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving our neighbor as ourselves. I guess the question is, what difference does this make in the way I live? You know, we might ask ourselves that question. I, I believe obedience is key to that, and that obedience to God represents itself. So I wanted to go through just a few things in regards to how we can apply this. You know, we can talk about it, but how do we make it applicable to tomorrow? Or it's, even It's a even, choice, not a feeling. That, that's right, yeah. yeah. And, and so as we look at that today, we first have to understand that the most important thing is our love for God and how it's seen in the world. 
And it's not only just a part of ourselves, but it's a part of those who are attached to us. Um, it involves our emotions. Listen, our emotions, our feelings. It involves not only our feelings, but the actions and the desires that we place in how we honor God. Listen to that. You know, sometimes we can just get up in a bad mood and we can be angry. What tampers that? What, what makes us adjust our lives on a moment-by-moment -moment basis? Well, I believe, first and foremost, our love needs to be exclusive to God. You know, we have to understand that God is first. Uh, it says that in um, Matthew 6, 21, guess what? We can't serve two masters. It says, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted, devoted is a great word to one, and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. And you know, in a materialistic world, the first thing we want to go to is those things that we can hold on to, those tangible things, and they can sometimes overrule our relationships, you know? So I think what we need to make sure of as we, as we go through this is if we want to love God, we must love Him exclusively. You know, this is the thing that is the temporary versus the eternal. You know, how long do we live here? It says 25,000, an average of 25,520 days on this earth would be a 70-year life compared to all eternity. So, you know, a lot of things uh, we say are the things that we can lose are the things that we have to really be careful of, but the things that will last forever are the things that we need to take notice of. Um, you know, our money can be gone in a day, but God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Even our relationships can be taken away from us, but God says, I'm a friend that sticks closer than a brother. You know, not only that, but I think we have to anchor our minds. We have to anchor our hearts. We have to anchor our souls. Listen to this. And all of our strength in serving the Lord. It comes through service. You know, if, if we're going to um, keep this endurance, I guess you would say, you can't just um, come together and say, oh, we just love this group of people. I believe it requires to be on mission together. Because when you're actively involved in missions together and you're doing life together for a common purpose to watch God, you grow close together. You grow really close. Think about a, a softball team or a baseball team, a basketball team. When they first become a team, they, they find themselves in a place where they don't really know each other. But as they go through the games, as they, do the work. As they go through the losses and the wins and they get to the end of the game, that team is unbreakable. They become very close. Right. They work it out. So the Lord was on a mission. Jesus was on a mission to come and express what it meant to love God. Mm -hmm. Wow. You could see Jesus praying to the Father. You could see it says that they were one. We, I and the Father are one. It can't get any closer than that. Well, if we have the mind of Christ, guess what? I want to be one with God. I want my heart to be obedient in oneness and in unity to Him. So as we look at this scripture, if we want to love God, we must love Him, listen, exclusively. Exclusively. Our hearts must be set on what delights his heart. What, a, what delights God's heart? What delights a father to a child or a mother to a child? Obedience. Because they're given direction. They're giving an opportunity for that child to grow. Well, you know what God desires for us as we, his children, to be obedient to him. For he says, I have come that you might have life. Listen, and have it more abundantly. He desires for us to grow in him. And will he challenge us or will he give us things that will stretch our faith? Well, of course he will. He wants us to grow in faith toward him and to show that we trust him. It says our hearts must be set on what delights his heart, right? And our minds must be anchored only to his word as the final authority. So obedience wise, what's the final authority? Do we shape the Bible to us? The question or do we shape our lives to the Word of God, the Bible? Well, let me help you. We are to shape our lives in obedience to the Word of God, and we are to interpret it correctly. It's so important that we do that. 
We'll listen to our, about our souls. We must be satisfied to only what please him. That inner core of who we are with God, that internal aspect of being created where he says, I knew yet before you were formed in your mother's womb. I knew who you were. I knew the purposes in which you were created, that which lives forever and ever. Well, we want that, that soul to be connected in such a way that we have a desire to please our Heavenly Father. And so not only that, but our strength must be spent. And this is the mission part I was mentioning a while ago. How do we use the day and the time that we have? You know, time is something that we can't buy. It's something that is continually fleeting and we can't get more of. So how important is that we invest our time in the things that God desires for us to invest it in? How do we invest our strength that God gives us today? Very valuable. Very valuable. You can't, very valuable. You mm -hmm. can't get it back. Mm -hmm. So we have to love God with an obedient heart. It says obedience to God's command is evidence that we trust that he is telling us the truth. Mm -hmm. And it reveals that we believe he loves us and desires the best for us. It's a covenant. It's a promise to God that we love him. We love God because it says in the Bible in 1 John 4, 19, that he first loved yes. us. So these are the things that I think that we, it just shows evidence of our relationship with God when we show obedience to God. So the last thing, it's a love that's persevering. You know, we go through hard times. Mm -hmm. We face trials. We face things in our lives we just don't understand. We, we quote this verse all the time, but it's a very important verse. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths or our paths. In James 1, 12, it says this. Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. I have a question. Are you going through trials? We are. But you know, I know that I have a God who loves me. And he approves of the calling that he set before us. And when I look at the calling, I know that he is responsible for me. Mm -hmm. Now think about that. Are you responsible for you or have you laid your life into the arms of God? Where he says, suffer the children to come unto me. And he placed them on his lap. I, I am a child of God. I know he was literally putting a child on his lap at this time, but it says that we are all children of God. Right. And when I'm on the father's lap, I know that I can trust him and now he's in charge. He's responsible for God me. Is. He's responsible for me and it is very easy to say and so hard to do. That's why it requires perseverance. We talked about that last week when we spoke of the, the verse that says perseverance work of character and character shapes us and molds us and, and, and it, the response is hope. We hope in the glory of God. So in this, it says that blessed is a man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Mm -hmm. I just want to read that one more time. Get a crown. For once he has been approved with mm -hmm. perseverance, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. You know what I reflect upon? I know in the Bible, I believe it's in Revelation, it says they will lay the crowns at his feet. That's right. You know, the crowns are for us. Mm -hmm. It's what we're off with the Lord when we see him face to face. And we bow before Jesus. We lay those crowns of service and love that are represented in that crown at the feet of, the, of our Savior, at the feet of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And it represents the life that he gives us. That's right. That's right. So this perseverance is one of the greatest examples of our love as a commitment to him. You know, it's a day-by-day -day thing. God wants us to love him with a love that perseveres. I think of Job when I think of that. You know, oh, even yeah. through all those hard times, he still never lost his faith. Never and cursed God. He never cursed God. He always loved the understanding that he knew God was sovereign mm -hmm. and that he was faithful. 
It's a message of faith. I will not lose my faith in God. And God did not lose his faith in him. That's right. He gave he him there. He gave him twice as much in the end. That's what he lost, right? That's what he lost. So with this, we must actively engage our minds and hearts to persevere. Will you do that with me? Just say that with me. We must actively engage our minds and hearts to persevere in loving God when the rest of the world tells us that we're foolish and they will. When I think about that, when the rest of the world will tell us we're foolish, I think about Noah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they just mocked him. Building a boat where there was no water no. for over a hundred <laughs> years. But you know who won in the end? Manoah and his family. Yeah. You know, God was faithful and God's call was true, even when it looked ridiculous. Right. Wow. So I just want to kind of hit these points really quick. For you to hold on to, you might want to take a pen and pencil and write these down. Guess what? It says, we love God with all our heart when we love Him exclusively. We love God with all our soul when we find our satisfaction in Him. We love God with all our mind when we make decisions to obey His every command. Every command. The Word is true. The Word is faithful. And it says, and then we love God with all our strength when we pers persevere in the face of every trial. Wow. So I have a question. How are we doing today? I guess we can evaluate that pretty much on a daily basis, can't we? And as a church, as OIB Life Church, I am really encouraged by this next passage because I believe this is where the rubber hits the road for us. Listen to this beautiful display of the kingdom of God. When all has come together, it says, when the Son of Man this is from Matthew 25, 31 through 46. So you might want to grab your Bible. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, and He will sit on the throne of His glory, all the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate them from one another, just as the shep shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right hand and the goats on the left. And then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in, and I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me, and I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When would, did we see you as a stranger and take you in? And when did we find you without clothes and clothe you? And when would, did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? This is so beautiful. It says, and the king will answer them, Assure, I assure you, whatever you did for the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. And then he will also turn to the left and you know, all the next ones will be a repeat of the very things that he just described to the sheep. Except he will say, you did not take in the stranger. You did not feed the hungry. You did not take care of the sick or visit those in prison. And in the very end of this, you could read that for yourself. He says this, then he will answer them, I assure you, I assure you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me either. And they will go away into eternal punishment. Those were the goats. Those are the ones who did not engage in this attitude of loving their neighbor as their self. But the righteous will go into eternal life. So I think what I'd like to close with is there are two things that will have um, the Lord speak to us, I, I believe, when we see him individually, one-on-one, -on -one, face to face. He will say, well done, good and faithful servant. We'll be his sheep. Or he'll say, depart from me, for I never knew you. And we will be representing the goats. You know, I think it's very important to be on mission with God. As we display in our actions, in how we live our life, what does the worship look like? Lord, I will love you with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind and all my strength. And I will love my neighbor as myself as I am a servant of the King. I hope you've had a wonderful time listening to the Word of God, 
sharing together with this beautiful song, singing, I love you, Lord. And we're on service together, taking the word of God into all the world. God bless you. Happy Valentine's Day. And look to that one you love with the love of Christ in Jesus' name.